good morning and welcome to the Image Talks Women's History. Y'all, it's the last day of Women's History Month. I'm so sad, but I'm excited at the same time because, listen, I done had a good time this month, but let me tell you, your girl tired. Like, this a, is a whole live job out here in these streets, but I'm super, super excited about the amazing turnout, the show up, the all of the above that we have done for the month of March and Women's History Month. I am Danielle Baskin, founder and CEO of the Image. I always forget to tell y'all my name, assuming that you know it and you may or you may not. But anyway, that's who I am. And bringing you guys into inspirational people, especially during the month of March, inspirational women, women who are breaking barriers, women who are doing the absolute complete most right here in and through our cities, our communities. And I am so stoked to just be the person to like give you a whole live platform for what's happening uh, in and through our community. So today I'm even more excited because coming up later up in the show, we have my cousin, my homie, my friend, my soro, all of the above, Stevana Elam Rogers, Black Women are for Ronald. So listen, I don't know if y'all know this, but we're going to get into it in a minute. But I do have my shoulder out this morning. This is this is for Stevana. And you'll find out later like why this is for her, all of this. The, the extra activity because listen, my girl, <laughs> we're gonna talk about it later because I, 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 I'm not, I, I'm not gonna cut up this one with y'all. I'm not gonna play with y'all this one. But anyway, I do have her here, here with us on this morning. And then uh, later on in the show, we're gonna have Katrina Brown with What's the Word with Katrina. So today is gonna be so amazing. Today's date is Wednesday, March 31st. And I did that without even looking at my paper or my screen. I'm getting better with the dates, y'all. I'm telling y'all, y'all know I'm the pits when it comes to a date. But my folks know that I need it to pop up on that screen every now and again. But the only reason why I normally remember the day on Wednesday, because what? It's my favorite day. It's $5 sushi day down to the Publix. So anyway, I am stoked about that. And y'all know I gave y'all my little spiel yesterday about the $5 sushi down to Publix. I feel like they played me a couple of days, but we're working on it. Uh, my relationship with the management down at the other Publix, we're, we're getting on one accord. So I feel like they're about to implement my $5 sushi at all of the public. So don't worry. We're going to listen. I'm going to write a letter in a minute because I want my $5 sushi. Midtown Publix. I'm coming for you. Anyway, I digress. Thank y'all so much for checking in. Let me know where you're uh, watching from. Let me know you're tuning in. Hey, Tish. Hey, Mary. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to the Image Talks Women's History. Today is going to be amazing. And you know why today is amazing? Today is uh, amazing because A, it's raining and storming outside. B, we're not going to let the rain, the wind, the flooding, or anything stop us from pursuing purpose today. Today is a purpose pursuing day. I know that's a tongue twister, but repeat after me. Today is a purpose pursuing day. Don't let nothing stop you. And I know that's incorrect English. Don't let nothing. I know it's incorrect, but hey, I'm telling you, whatever words, whatever type of English, whatever language you need to use to get it into your spirit, that you have work to do, sweet girl and sweet guy, there is a plethora of things that you have to put your hand to today and get it done. So don't be dismayed. Don't trip. Don't be confused. Don't worry about what's happening around you. Don't let the floods, the winds, the rain, or any of that keep you from getting out of bed like it is doing for Tia today. Because Tia, I wish I was back in the bed right now, but that's okay, homie. You you got per you got work to do today as well. And I know you're going to get to it shortly. But I just want to encourage you guys on this morning that let nothing stop you. Be obedient. Like do what it is that you need to do today. Do what it is that God called you to do. If you woke up this morning, you can move, you can blink, you can talk. If you have one of those functions. You may not have all of them. Just keep it real. But if you have one of them, there is purpose in your body, which means there is still breath and there is still work to be done. So I want to encourage you out. Thank you, Mary. Yes. Purpose pursuing day. Clap for the people in the back, Mary. Yes. All of the above. So the scripture of the day that I want to give you guys, because one of the things that we do each and every day is we give you a real good scripture. We give you a real dope woman of the Bible, and we give you an extremely dope woman who is making history, breaking barriers, doing the absolute most right here in their own communities. And so the first thing I want to do today, today is give you the word of the day, which is Luke 22 and 42. And again, if you have your Bibles, then you may have already broke this out this morning. You may have already read it. I don't know. This may be your first time. Doesn't matter. Here we are. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. I know we've heard that last part of that scripture at some point in our life. Lord, not my will, but your will. Your will be done. 
Y'all, we can't keep giving lip service and telling the Lord your will be done and then we do our own thing. We got to ask the Lord to have his way in our lives in whatever form or fashion that is. So read that scripture, meditate on that scripture. And I am going fast this morning. You know why I'm going fast this morning? Because I know Stavana and I are about to cut up. I know we're going to go over time. I know we got a lot to discuss because this girl here, y'all, I'm telling y'all, like the bio was just, I was like, homie, I'm not, I'm not reading all this about you. I'm going to tell them what I know about you. And we're going to get to it. But anyway, I am going to bring her up just uh, in a moment. So hold tight, tag somebody, share this live, let them know that you guys are watching the Image Talks Women's History. Stavonna Elam Rogers is coming up next. Danielle talking fast because she excited like black women off of grown ups are all in the mix. I logged on this morning and my producer and Stavonna cutting up. I was like, what? Well, well, What's happening here? It's already a party. So I know we're about to be excited about what's about to go down right here. We're in the mix. Oh, I don't know y'all know there's something different. Let me just be very clear. I got a new chair today. And I, I don't know why I didn't test this chair out last night. I should have, but I'm sitting kind of tall this morning. But I kind of like my new little frame. But anyway, I got a new chair. So just bear with me as we work through some things. I like to call myself out before y'all do. Because y'all slick down to this here internet. That's all right. But I know all y'all love me. So I'm excited. I'm stoked. Uh, what else did I want to do today? Oh, we normally do a business of the day. We normally feature a woman owned business each and every day. Uh, and we want to give props to that woman. However, comma. Savannah is a business within herself. She is all things black women are for grown up. So I'm going to just feature it right now before we get into it. If you do not have a black women are for grown up shirt, I can't guarantee that when you go to the site, you're going to get one a day because her marketing is so strategic that she only releases them at certain times a year. But anyway, follow her. Stavonna.com. She's on Instagram at uh, Stevie underscore Elam. She's on Facebook, but don't play with her down on Facebook because she's normally not there. But uh, follow her. Black women are for grown-ups is a whole live movement. It's a business. They have these really cute like diamond clips that say BWRFG. I want one of those, Fred. I need one of those really quick. Oh, and of course, our chat book that we're going to talk about a little bit later on in the show. But anyway, support Black-owned, and she is a Black-owned business. She's a woman-owned business, and she is doing some amazing things. So I cannot wait to have a conversation with her. So I said all of that in a really quick time. Hey, Tish. I'm, it's the shoulder out for me today as well, Tish. I know I'm I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm doing some new things over here today, Tish. So thank you for for recognizing what we got going on over here. But anyway, um, before I bring Stevon on, I do want to pray. I just want to ask the Lord to just kind of have His way this morning. I know this conversation is about to be fun and full of joy, full of peace. We are family in real life. That is my first cousin, and so y'all about to see me cut up because I'm excited to talk to Stevonna. Why she gonna come on here and act all proper at first and then it's all it's all, all the way. But anyway, so let me pray and ask the Lord to just lead God and direct us and then uh we will jump right into the conversation with my cousin, my friend, a womanist, writer, author, all of the above. But let me not go. Let me pray first. Father in heaven, I thank you. I honor you and I give you glory. Uh, Father God, I just ask that you just lead God and direct this conversation, Father God. Open my mouth and whatever it is that you want me to say or share, Father, I do that. Let me be obedient, Father God. Let your word be ever present in and through our lives, Father. We know that you will do a thing. I ask and I pray blessings over each and every person under the sound of my voice. You know exactly what they need in the moment that they need it, Father God. And I'm asking for provision and I'm asking for resources, Father. And I'm asking that you send some relief for those that need to be relieved today in the name of Jesus. Father, we are praying um, that you protect us and keep us from danger seen and unseen, Father God. Uh, Father, we love you. We honor you. We give you glory. We're praying these prayers in faith, believing that they shall be done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. So this morning, I have the pleasure of talking with my cousin. Like, real talk, this is my girl. I have her bio right here in front of me. And I'm, I'm going to read a snippet of it because I just want y'all to get the depth of what it is that she does and what she's doing in and through the community. And that is one of my absolute favorite pictures of Stevana. And I, I was like, put that one up right there. Stevana Elam Rogers sees a womanist writer, educator, an orator with a passion for innovative examination and advocacy of black culture and womanhood. Stavonna received her BA from the University of Alabama in English and African-American studies. In 2007, she began her teaching journey by way of Teach for America in New Orleans and received her master's of arts in teaching from Louisiana College with a concentration in culturally responsive teaching. 
here we are. <laughs> uh, Stavana, in the spring of 2016, uh, education became the foundation of Black Women Are for Grownups, a digital campaign she launched alongside an ever popular T-shirt to celebrate and heighten the visibility of the full, complex narratives of Black women. This idea continues to inspire tangible projects and collaborations exclusively for Black women under the platform Project Black Women Are for Grownups. Whether it's curating Black women center spaces or getting uh, sticky palms for a raw guerrilla art campaign, the Stavana, who is celebrated as the writer of the Refinery 29 list, 20 Black women you need to know right now, has been invited to interview artists, lecture, conduct, uh, workshops, and share her written works at various institutions, including but not limited to the New York Times, St. Huron, Ace Hotel, the Contemporary Art Center of New Orleans, Xavier University. Listen, hey, 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 this list is going to go on and on and on. Let me go ahead and bring her on so she can tell you about all of the amazing things that she is doing. I am so excited to present to you guys this morning, my cousin, my friend, the amazing Stavana Elam Rogers. <laughs> Hey girl, <laughs> I'm gonna try my best not to cut up. I'm gonna try. No, yeah, please do because I really want to. I want to stay focused. I know the people want. Oh, <laughs> we can cut up offline. Okay, but you know, we can cut up. We'll try to stay focused, y'all. But why were we cutting up this morning? What, what midnight hey. last night? The attack. Midnight. <laughs> yeah, I sent. I sent this one. Everything that she needed for this morning. What did she do? Uh, hey, sweet girl. I don't think I have the info. Okay. You, know, <laughs> you were like, you need to check your email. I was like, what? <laughs> anyway, hey, Cuzzo, what's going on? What you got going on today? I mean, you're over there glowing and just kicking it. What's Listen, up? I told you <laughs> last night, I was like, I am not a morning person. I don't know how you do it. You wake up looking like 10 million bucks early in the morning, ready to you go. At six o'clock. You know, I struggled. I put on my eyebrows. Ain't even. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's, a struggle. <laughs> it's all good. So listen, I just read an awful lot about what you do, and particularly, of course, the black women are for grownups. And I want to start there. If that's cool with you, because I want to talk about it. And y'all, I have my black women are for grownups. I was telling Corey. I said, Corey, come help me find my t-shirt, and because we just washed clothes last night, and I was like, I gotta wear it today. <laughs> So tell me what Black women are for grownups. What is that? What's that movement about? Yeah, I mean, so honestly, it started because I was writing and it was one of the things that I loved. Like I read something and, and wanted to write about it. And one of my friends, when I wrote about it, said, I love that. One of my friends, Brittany, she's actually, she's out of, she lives in Birmingham, but she's out of Florence. So Dana, wait, I know you're like, girl, can you not get some? Oh, this, this is new for me, so I'm like, ooh, loose here. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying, y'all, that part. Just go for it. If you yeah, need to do that in the comments every now and again, it's okay. Go for it. But I wrote it because I write, and my homegirl was like, I love that. We need to put it on a shirt. And I was like, girl, everybody put everything on a shirt these days. So it's not everything on a shirt. She was like, no, you can put it on a shirt, and like, you know, you want to self-publish so you can get some money to just do your baseline self-publishing. So mm -hmm. I thought I was like, I'll sell like a hundred shirts. And basically when I wrote about it, it was literally about um, having your, like basically presenting the fullness of black womanhood, bringing all of you to the table, right? So we have someone like Maya Angelou who we know and who we love. She's a whole core laureate, she's everything, right? But like, she had a rough start, <laughs> you know? And like, right. didn't hide the fact that her start was rough and yeah. that, you know, she had been delivered from being a sex worker and she had been, you know, like it was a whole host of things that, you know, she was, that she came to being. And so I'm like, we have to own all of those things. We've all done things that we aren't proud of, right? As women, and we should talk about them more so that like our future generation of girls don't just feel like, you know, they're figuring out, figuring it out on their own. We've all been there. We've all done that. And that's why we love Granny so much because she, Granny will tell it all. <laughs> our family, our family is very open like that though. And like, yeah, so absolutely. when I think of Black women for grownups, I really think of our family because we're very honest and open and been there and done, done that. So you don't have to, but there yeah. are a lot of families that keep a lot of secrets, you know, mm -hmm. and aren't as open, especially around what it means to be a woman. So right. you know, I wanted to present something, a platform where people could wear the shirt and when people ask them what it means, they can tell their story, they can write their story. And, and literally, I remember saying to my friend, I was like, I right, would we'll probably sell like maybe a hundred shirts and 
you know, like a running gun and we out. And it's just like right. thousands and thousands of shirts. Like, like I could have never imagined the life it would take on of its own, you know, but like doing this actually made me put together a website, which was right. like, I didn't have a website prior to the shirts. So I was like, I need to do this thing. I'm writing. I've done all this thing all, over all the years, similar to you. Like you've always been doing your thing. But then one day somebody says, you need to put this all in one spot. So find it. And you're like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you out here thinking you're about to sell 100 shirts. And then you look up one day and LeVar Burton is in your shirt. <laughs> like, like, the, like the roots, the like reading rainbow LeVar Burton is in your shirt. Like, what do you do with that, homie? Like, what? what like? <laughs> I know. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it really has like so many different people who are well known I don't, have been in this shirt that is just like I never really expected it every time I'm like huh you know but like he liked it it's so funny I dig a backstory and how he got it because I just mm -hmm. had to <laughs> so basically his wife bought the shirt his wife mm -hmm. is a huge like Hollywood makeup artist okay his wife bought the shirt and he stole the shirt from his wife like he found no. it <laughs> Not a stole the shirt. She, he literally took this shirt from his wife. She had no idea he was wearing it. He popped up on Two Dope Queens. It's a huge podcast. Like yeah. I think Phoebe has done HBO specials and all types of stuff. So he pops up on the show with it. And of course, they make a big deal of the shirt. They're like, wow, like this is, you know, what does it mean? Da, da, da. So he's talking yeah. about it. And all the time she was like, first of all, this is my shirt, Negro. <laughs> hey, hey, you you tipped in my closet and stole my shirt. It's, it's my shirt for me. So I actually ended up sending her like a second way so that Lamar could have her shirt. Right. So like, she didn't have hers, but it was really cool. And so it's it's nice because I think black women are for grown ups. So often people are like, Oh, black women love it, da, da, da. And like, of course, black women do love it, but we got a lot of brothers out there who support. Yeah. Who love it? I got some homeboys that don't do right by the shirt, so you can't trust every man you see in it because they care yeah. talking about talking about you know the girls holler at me. I was like, I was like, please don't use the shirt for evil, sir. So are boy. you trying to catch women in it, or are you trying to represent us? Like, what are we doing out here? Sweet this this boy, don't use the shirt for that. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, so one of the things you said a few minutes ago. When you were just you, you just mentioned Granny, and of course, when you mentioned we Granny, we, her. We listen, love her. We, we, uh, listen, Granny, and then Dana put in the comments, Granny is the goat. Granny the is goat. definitely the goat, the greatest of all times. But I, we when we popped her up here because y'all know, listen, we can go on and on for days about Granny. But like when you hear <laughs> Granny, when we talk about Granny, like what comes to mind? What what just floods your spirit when we talk about our Granny? Yeah, like Granny is everything you know our everything she's honest she is loving but you know how some people like you know how some people have grannies that are loving but they're also like uh in in very kind of like quintessential like the way you would think of granny ways like our granny does bake cookies and you know do all of that stuff but she's very much so like she's raw and she's gonna be real with you i remember i brought some dude home and <laughs> I brought this dude home who had like two kids <laughs> and granny was like <laughs> Negative. literally she looked at him and said well Savannah doesn't have any kids so you know tell me about your burdens and I was like granny do not call this man kids burden sleeper <laughs> why, would you granny, why would you do such a thing and I was just mortified she was like I had six of them so I'm not judging yet <laughs> I was just <laughs> Well, the grand keeps her. I'm not judging. I'm just I'm being judging you, you know, and you know, she always got some advice you didn't ask for, but she's gonna tell you anyway. And so, you know, that's what I think of when I think of her. Like, I don't think of like the grandma that's gonna like be be like super super sweet and give you cookies at the door and give you, you know, like. But she has some of those sweet aspects. Right. I think that she's like she's like a walking life map. You right. know what I'm saying? Like right. she's a walking wisdom about every topic that you could ever have, you know? And it's if you ask her, she will tell you the truth. She like, will tell about you the situation about really anything. Is. And I think that it's made me a better woman. I think it's made us a better family. Yeah. I think it, I think it makes us hard to date. We could talk about that at another time if we don't want to do that. How much anything. time do we have? Like <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, I just think that, like, I think that sometimes people prefer women to be a little bit meek you know what I'm saying? Like a little bit mild. 
Um, not too much talk, not too much to say, not too much opinion. And that's just not who the Elam women are. No. It's just not who we are, you know? No. So, and I think that she instilled that in us. And I think, I think we've been able to move forward in business. We've been able to build yeah. families and build, because like she instilled that in us. Education was really important to her. Yeah. Like that's, that's the core of who we are. But, you know, I think you have all of that. And then people be like, how can we measure up? How can we add oh, up? Right. right. Look, you know, we've been saying it for years. We feel like Jasmine finally broke the curse. <laughs> <laughs> because baby, I mean, we out here in these streets, single, single, and we was like, I think, I think it, it must have been at one of our cousins' luncheons, like maybe years ago, and we realized we was like, dang, ain't none of us married, like. No. And, and so we keep a boo. I mean, that's not with anybody. <laughs> we, keep, we keep a little boo. We keep a little, keep a little, keep a little boo. <laughs> Got somebody but if we, we're married, we got somebody who's gonna move the boxes, but it's like <laughs> girl, listen. Oh uh, uh, look, uh, I'm married. <laughs> it's a whole it's a whole different story. Like it's a whole different story. But so <laughs> one of the things that you did was based on Granny or inspired by a conversation that you had with Granny. You wrote this whole live black women off a grown-ups chat book. Yeah, now the book is featured. In the Amistad, uh, let me see, let me make sure I get it right. Amistad Research Center, it's archived yes. there. Yeah, it's the largest independent archive in the nation. Yeah, oh, it just happens to be. Okay. It's in New Orleans. It's on Tulane's campus, like Tulane University, but okay. it used to be on Dillard's campus. It used to be on Fisk campus, but it's a national archive. It's just here. So tell me, like, the inspiration behind the book. Like, what is, because, I mean, I have my own copy of the chat book that I won uh, in a family. No, <laughs> You yes. have to find about this book at the family Christmas event, and I won. You won. I still, I gotta find this video because I still have it. You were like, I won. I'm stumped. <laughs> it was like our family went up over this chat book. We like, went up over this chat book because it was you that was writing. It was you talking about black women are for grownups, and of course, highlighting our grannies. So tell us about that uh, chat book. Yes, like. Well, when I put the shirts out, one of the things that, you know, that, that I was like pushed to really think about was that, you know, how was I going to share how the shirt and what the saying came to be, like how it came to be? What were the writings that I put out? What were the things that I was thinking about? So like the chapbook is a mix of a couple of things. It's like an interview with Granny. It's um I have journal entries in there. I have like published articles, which I had to get clearance because once you like publish an article, they really don't like for you to like publish it again. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, you can get like, you can get penalized for that because they pay you for it. So it now belongs to them. Okay. So I had to kind of get clearance to be able to do that. And I wanted to do it the self-publishing route. I was like, I could do this another way, but like, I don't know people like Nikki Giovanni, uh, like Amiri Baraka. And those are all people that, you know, they self-publish for a very, very long time to be able as black people to say what we want to say without being like, hyper surveillance you know yeah. like cause sometimes when you publish for white people like they want you to say what they want you to say you know they want to present you in their light and so like the thing about like the image is that you get to present yourself in the light that you think is important the light that mm -hmm. black women think is important the light you know like this is what we how we want to be seen yeah. and that always right. happen when you allow other people to take control of it so self-publishing was really important and yes it came after the shirts so the search came first. You keep like, the authenticity of everything. Like, yeah, I was like, I need to like actually, you know, explain this. And there, uh, a, a good friend of mine had done a write up for Huffington Post on Black women are for grown ups, and I just wanted that to be a one place where people could get it. So we literally put it together. Um, I worked with a local printer to get it going. <laughs> not the nickname. Not the <laughs> you know, this one's calling me during the show. Now you know Stevana is on today. Why are you calling me, sir? <laughs> Not the nickname. Okay, uh, Damien or uh, Dana, text mama because you know she's listening. Please text mama. She forgot and she kept texting me. When is when is Bonnie coming on? <laughs> so please text mama and tell her she's missing it. <laughs> but like literally, I I was like, let me put this book together. Let me put it out. And again. I only did 50 because I was like, come on, it would be like 50. <laughs> right, right, right. I was like, 50, people understand. No. So I had to print way more people. Like, it took off. And the, the main thing that people always talk about is that they had just actually never seen, and not that it doesn't exist because it does, you know, but they were like, this is the first time I'm really seeing, like, 
journal entries that remind me of myself. Like mm -hmm. someone talked about color. Like I talked about just like growing up, you know, our family, which you'll probably feel too. Like, you know, our family, certain parts of our family are very light, 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 bright. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, because granny's half white. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. So, you know, it's given light, bright. And, you know, then you got shades of melanin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> me and you. Right. <laughs> me, me and you. And it's, it's weird, Kavana, because that was one of the conversations that me and mama were going to have when I talked to her. It was like growing up, like our mamas, all of our aunts, all of them. Oh. Are, they are like Dana's color. And then here, me and I think me, you, Jasmine, are Asian. Yeah, and, and yes. that's it. And it's that's like, it. yeah, oh, what? Yeah, you're kind of like, okay, so you know, finding yourself in that world, people are like, is that your, is that your mama? Is that that's your? Yeah, you're like, you're like, yeah, you know, it it does do something to you over time, and you have to kind of like work out those feelings, you know, yeah. and like, you know, some people go to therapy, some people go to, you know, some people figure it out, but like for me, writing was like a form of therapy and a way yeah. of like getting it out and explaining it and you know, really loving all the parts of who I am. And that's what Black Men for Grown Ups means. It's like, there's so many things about us that we have to like figure out and love and purge from that don't suit us well, you know? Yeah. So growing up is a very difficult task. You know, my Angela has this quote where she talks about the fact that people get older, they have the nerve to have children, but growing up costs the earth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like growing up means that you take responsibility for the space that you take up in the world. You know, right. it's a serious business, you know, it means a lot. And so, you know, having that and wanting to be vulnerable and also setting like a litmus test for other people, you know, like you can't just be my friend if you're not together. You can't just be my friend if you're not together. Yeah. Ooh, did you say a, lit a litmus test? Yes. <laughs> a little, little litmus test. It's like, wait, it's, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Right. You, you can't, you can't, you can't you like, in my go. circle. You go to a new house, you pull out your ruler. You're like, well, let me see. <laughs> Will this fit this window? I don't know. You know, so that's, no. you know, you have to do that. And I think that as women, we're taught to just take whatever comes our way. Be happy somebody looking at you. Be happy somebody, you know. No, you know, we yeah. have standards for how we roll. We have standards for how you can treat me, you mm -hmm. know. And, and that's a, a hard road too, right? It's not... It's not something that you just wake up with. And, and I think Granny has been very honest about her journey. She's like, yeah. you know, I wasn't always treated right. And I didn't always expect more for myself, you know? Yeah. And it's helpful when we share that because other people get to learn. So, I mean, that's also the powerful thing about your platform is because, like, you get on here and you tell the truth, you know? And the know. Truth, you really will set us free. And I know it's like a thing that people say, and it, it can kind of be given, like, corny sometimes, but it's the truth. You know, it really will set us free. It really it does. And I tell, I tell people all the time, it's the transparency for me. It's the transparency. There are, listen, there are a multiplicity. Right. There's like, yeah. there's like so many people <laughs> that we can follow. There's so many people that we can look to, like these women groups and these organizations. And I love them. I love the fact that we can all come together. But what I yeah. can do, you're not going to get in here and be fake with me. No. You're not going to get up and be glorious and pretty and then ain't nobody trying to tell me the truth about what no. happened. No. So that is what I, I honor and I respect, of course, about you, uh, about about Granny. Is that we will legit like we're gonna tell you the truth. Listen, tell you the truth. I stopped when I, when I stopped working in 2011, 2012, I used to go to Granny House like almost every day and just sit over there and kick it. And girl, Granny was spilling the tea. If you having a tea, you'd be like, Wow, girl, <laughs> you never even knew she, and you'd be like, I didn't even know you had that much tea you could spill. This is a picture, this is a whole. <laughs> picture a galvanized situation of things. But listen, in, in, in even in respect to that transparency, Stavana, like knowing what we know about, you know, our parents and definitely our granny and our granddad, like how does that help you grow up? How does that help you say, oh, dang, I, I ain't out here in these streets by myself. Like somebody else did it too. Or like, you know, how does that kind of help with your growth process? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the truth of the matter is the more we understand about our families, the more we understand about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we've all been in situations where we've like done a thing and it's like, is that like, is that something that I would do? You know what I'm saying? Like, why, <laughs> why would I do that? And then when you dig a little bit deeper, it's like, oh, you know. Okay, then. <laughs> auntie did that. Granny did that. You know, my cousins did that. You know, I, you know. We just have like all of these things. And I think that other people have to dig very, very hard for them. You yeah. Know? Like other people have to kind of like 
I mean, there are families and, you know, I've, I've taught for several years. And mm -hmm. so, you know, just like teaching high school and, you know, engaging with students. I'm just like, man, your family has like years and decades of secrets and you're having to like go through life and figure it out on your own. You have mm -hmm. no roadmap, you know? Yeah. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to have a roadmap. Like I think last Christmas, granny said, <laughs> granny, you, you, you brought your camera, sweet girl. <laughs> and, I, and I have the footage and I am going, this, year, I, sweet girl. this year I'm going to get that produced. So, yeah. man, you brought your camera, sweet girl. <laughs> To, to get granny on camera, granny to spill all the tea. And then, but as she was doing it, I was like, oh, like a lot of this makes so much sense. And then you even I remembering, mean. do you remember like what happened the days after, like when we were at our aunts and how yes. so many other things that I, <laughs> mean, I had to just go sit in a room for a minute. I was like, <laughs> it's <Friday. laughs> it, was it was a little bit too much for me, but. It was, needed. it was definitely necessary. It was, it was necessary. And I think, you know, it's just helpful. You know, it's helpful to know, like, my dad, who is one of my best friends, is, like, obsessed with Granny. Yeah. Like, obsessed with her. And, you know, he's like, the reason I love your grandmother is straight out the count when I first met her. She just kept it real with me. And it's hard to find that, you know. Yeah. And so I think that, like, for us, you know, when I'm when I show up a certain way, I always knew that I was assertive, you mm -hmm. know, and I think that I don't have to look far to understand that. And I think, and, and quite frankly, you know, in thinking about not how to curtail being assertive, but in being strategic, you yeah. know, like we all have to learn how to communicate. We all have to learn how to be strategic in, in getting the things that we want and talking to the people that we love. I was talking to one of my former students last night. She does my lashes. She put my lashes on, so I went to like a sea urchin today. But I was like, <laughs> I was like, my hair, would have, my nails not gonna be done. Like she's gonna grow on a different nail. But my lashes, I need some lashes on. The lashes are intact. But she was saying that she, you know, was into it with her family and this and that. And I was like, listen, she has a very close knit family. And I was saying to her, you know, listen, your family that you love so much, you know you have to figure out how to communicate with them if you love them, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, you also have to figure out how to put healthy boundaries up, right? Yes. Uh, you right. know, you can't just let family run over you, but you don't want to abandon family so much, especially if you're a unit where you know somebody really cares about you, has gone above and beyond this and that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so you have to figure out what this looks like for you, but just kind of like not talking to your family at all. In this case, I don't think is like the thing, you know, it sure. very rarely is the thing, to be honest. And so I was just like, you have to figure out like what it looks like to, to sometimes like love people from a distance. You know, Granny talk about loving people and feeding people with a long silver spoon. Baby, Granny, <laughs> the, me and Granny talked about it the other day. Granny will say, I don't like you, but I love you. And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> Granny tell you she love you, but she don't like you. That that part. That's, 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 that's the part. Yeah. She's like it's a long handle spoon. I'm going to feed you with it, but I'm still feed you. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> well, you look, <laughs> one of the things that you said that I wanted to point out, and I think it's so hilarious how all of our fathers, like all of our fathers who are no longer like my daddy, like they loved granny and granny yeah. treated like my daddy. Like that was her son. And yeah. like even years after it's like, granny, granny will keep your boo when you're done. That's the key. <laughs> Granny. You'd, be like, you'd be like, Granny, we broke up 10 years ago. Why are you still sending him gift packages? He don't need no COVID care package, Granny. Yes, he does. Yeah. Granny will, he, he lives with granny will with your boo. She will love on him like that is her grandchild. <laughs> yeah, that was your relationship, not mine. I still had a relationship with him. You'd be like, girl, what? <laughs> he treated me fine. <laughs> but that's what we do. You know, like, I think so often, you know how, like, if, if somebody is beefing with somebody, you cut off the, so you, you know, it used to be you cut off the whole crew. Like, right. you, know, you you know, I got that from Granny. I'd be like, that's y'all beef. I don't know. We still cool. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was just me, homie. Like, folks would be looking at me. Like, you get this out of him. I'd be like, oh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Like, <laughs> I mean, I ain't got to tell you about it, but like, we still cool. We still cool. Like, I just, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but look, you have to listen. I told, I told y'all we was gonna cut up before it's all said and done. But look, you have you're you're an amazing writer, published writer, been published in in so many places, and just being a writer, and of course the type of uh, writings and the things that you do to support Black women. When you hear the names like Maya Angelou and Toni Morrison, and and even you know my girl Oprah and Nikki Giovanni, like yes. what comes to mind when you hear those names? I mean, those black women created our foundation, you know, the foundation of so much of who we are as a group, as a collective has been just from their like tireless work. There are people who gather our stories, you know, what you do, which is similar in their footsteps is that, you know, what you're doing in its own right is really an archival process, right? Where you like are documenting what is happening over time, mm -hmm. you know, in 20, 2050 and 20, 2080, you know, those generations will be able to look back and see this is what existed for us and be able to build on that. And that's important. So like without those women, we wouldn't have that, you know, you can go right. back and look at Oprah interviews and you know, you can go back and look at the way that she's like engaged with people, the way that she's put black women on over the years. <coughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> get, you, get your sip of water now twice. <laughs> Look at me. I'm like, every time I'm coughing, I'm like, Corona? <laughs> you, know, you know the test. If you cough twice, it's an issue. I'm Wait like, well, not to be careful. <laughs> Look, not the. I was like, oh, excuse me, wait a minute. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I had time to clear out my throat. It's early in the morning. <laughs> get your, look, get your little sip of water now. Oh, so we're going to be careful when I I don't have Corona. This is what I'm doing. Listen, you ain't been. Where have you been? Where, where have you been? Oh, I'm I'm been you down to the ground. You've been you nowhere. Know, you know I'm going nowhere. I'll be in my yeah. house cutting up. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But um, <laughs> look, picking up in your house, cutting up, and I have been following you down to the ground. And if free, being free was a person, <laughs> it would be you. Where does that freedom come from? How can folks buy some of it? Can you bottle it up? Like it is just, it's too it's just free. You don't, you don't, you don't care nothing about it. Like you, it is what it is. And this it is, is what it is. is. I mean, you know, part of it is this. Like I think. You know, I started therapy about, I went through like a rough breakup. I, I went through a rough breakup. And at the same time, I had taken a severance from my job, right? I was working at Teach for America for the time, at the time. And they literally were like, we're going to um, restructure our staff, right? <laughs> Not these masks. Y'all don't do me like that. <laughs> Don't do me like that. <laughs> no, 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 stay, stay focused. <laughs> so basically, um, I had gone through that and I was like, okay, I'm going to bounce back. I don't think it'd be hard for me to find another job. I'm in education. I'll figure it yeah. out. Or I just may do writing full time. I was just in flux, but I decided to take my severance and move on. Mm -hmm. So, because they were like, you can reapply. And I was like, reapply? Where? For what? No, I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so I took my little severance and kept it pushing. But at that time, you know, I was like, let me get my black women up for grown up stuff. I was trying to amp up that stuff. And then my boo left me, girl. We friends now, but I was like, you got some nerve. <laughs> Y'all cool now. You really have some nerve. I was like, I brought you home and everything for you to cut up like this. But <laughs> we broke up because he was like, this too, bitch. I was like, oh my God. So like, we broke up. Mm -hmm. And I was like in a place where I was like, okay, I'm not working. I don't have my boo. <laughs> what am I do? You confused. What, 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 what are my next steps? You know, right. like, and I was like, okay, I need to like actually figure out where I need to move. And so I got a therapist. Mm -hmm. Like I'd had a therapist, okay, but I'd had a therapist before. But I like actually moved to getting a therapist for real, for real. Like I had a therapist that, you know how you have a therapist, you kind of run to them sometimes. But when you need stuff, when you go through a hard time, but you don't go to them consistently. I was like, yeah, I'm actually going to get a consistent therapist to work through my stuff. And another thing that my ex and I did was that we actually went to therapy together, even though we weren't together. 
because mm -hmm. we wanted to do like a couple, I think we did like five couples therapy, even though we weren't, we knew we weren't going to get back together, but we just wanted to leave each other lighter, you know? Yeah. And we don't, I, I mean, that's so, it's so grown. I, yeah. I, was like, I, I, I put it to him. I didn't think he was going to do it, but he was like, yeah. Yeah. He was like, actually, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about me. I learned mm -hmm. a lot about him. I learned a lot about what I could do differently next time. And it actually yeah. felt better. You know, I was like, cool. So we were doing that on top of my own therapy for myself. And then I was like, you know, God revealed to me what I need to be doing. And then like the, the work that I do now dropped in my lap, literally, you know, I run a nonprofit, Black Education for New Orleans, it's just two of us. But we're like, we do real big work here. It's a lot for two people. Yeah. But it's, it's beautiful work. And it just kind of like dropped in my lap and the price was great. I was like, I ain't never made this much. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, I right. this. this is a check, okay? <laughs> I was like, we're, we're here for the checks. It, yes, was check. no. it was a check. I was like, this is a, a big check. And it was doing work that I love. I get to be yeah. creative. I get to be black centered. I get to work with another black woman who I adore. And, you know, I, I, I had a boo since then, but then I let that go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been, so I've been a smooth single for a good two and a half years and I really actually love it. And a part of my freedom came from that. I think the last person that I literally dated, I was like, this is not the healthiest because I'm not the healthiest. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to prove I can be with somebody because I just really hopped out of something. Yeah. You know, you know how you want to be like, it was them, not me. I'm happy. I'm doing up. <laughs> no. But, but, but being able to say that, mm, something ain't right, something ain't clean in the buttermilk. Let me move on. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this ain't, this ain't it, you know? So I was like, you know, let me not, let me, it ended, it ended and it wasn't cute. Okay, we did not do therapy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I need to cut this tie. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm fooling with this one here. We're not doing therapy. I, I don't like you that much. No, I was like, I don't like you that much. I don't, yeah. I don't like what this is giving. So we right. won't let go, but it taught me a lot about myself and yeah. that freedom that I felt within myself to just be like, okay, girl, like focus in on yourself. You know, like, yeah. what do you like to do? Who are you at the midnight hour? Mm -hmm. You know, who are who are the people that you want to have around you? You know, and I literally couldn't have asked for a better time in my life. You know, yeah. like, I think, you know, I was living my best life, honestly, then COVID hit. And I was like, OK. <laughs> But, 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 but real talk, it looked like you're still living your best life. I'm like, still living my best I life. Have a good time I'm, through you. Honestly, yeah, when COVID hit, I was like, okay, like you, you are the life of your own party. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we're the life of our own party. We have to figure out how to tap into that. And like it's gonna sound like cliche because y'all have probably heard this on therapy shows, but it's true. Like one of the things that my therapist talks about with me all the time. Well, I have a black therapist, and he's bomb. But, you know, one of the things we talk about all the time is like the things that we're most hurt about are just things that happened, you know, at, that when we were children, you know, like your inner girl child yeah. has been hurt, you know, or the things that we're most passionate about are the things that like our inner girl child probably always wanted to do. Yeah. Like, you've always been someone who's like, let's tell the story and let's talk and let's play and let's, you know, let's relate, you know, and so... Through your passion, you get to let that come out. You know, like we have people in our family. Brad is a beautifier. You know, yeah. your mother's a beautifier. But like their inner girl child probably always wanted to do that. And, you know, as black women, we sometimes feel like we got to choose. You know what I'm saying? Like we got families. Yeah. To care of, we got people we got to, you know, to, so we choose like these jobs. You know, like I remember Auntie Sandra, who I love, and that's my girl. Right. And, you know, Auntie Sandra literally said to me, like, I remember being like, I want to be a poet. You know, I was like, <laughs> I was like going to the college. Auntie Sandra was like, now what you want to do? Because she was helping me get my little education plan together. And I was like, I want to be a poet. She was like, girl, if you don't go to school with major education or something, and, you know, and I did. <laughs> she was like, ain't no poet going to make no money. And so like, oh, God, how much time do you have? Yeah, like, I ended up doing it. And I do not regret going into education at all. Yeah. I think there, there are things about it that allow me to live out my life's purpose. But that road back to like actually writing and being a poet and just like, yeah. you know, it was important for my inner girl child to do that. You know, yeah. and like, when you tap into that, it allows you to be free. Like when you probably think of your freest moments, it's like 
probably you hopping on the image of being like, what's up, y'all? Let's do it. Bringing that good energy, bringing that love and price to people. You know, when you're like decorating and putting something together and you watch it come alive and you watch people eyes light up because like I'm having a baby shower and like somebody who cares about me and yeah. what I'm about did that. You know, like that's your inner girl child living and there's so much freedom in that when you kind of take yourself out those shackles. So I just be like, listen, what are we doing? We dancing what to what we dance doing? To, the, to, to, you know, Project Pat today. What you <laughs> listen, I was to, listen, I was telling one, one Sydney who was in my background, Sydney works with me in the office a couple of days a week. I was telling her the other day, I said, Sydney, real talk, like I love Jesus. But like me and Dana, Dana and I were in the car Sunday with the kids and we literally played eight ball and MJG all the way back to the house. And we was like, and the kids was like, it's oh, true. Look at what you thought. It's <laughs> like, true. It's true. Give me some Project Pad. Give me some Ti. Give me all of that, and I will wrap yes. the single word. Yeah, yeah, because it's you know it's all of who we are. Like it's, right. you know we we of course like love the Bible. We love God. We love gospel. We love you know. But also like we're Southern. We grew up in the South, girl. Yeah. We say, where the Ti at? Where the you know like this is just. This is who we are. And it's like all of that is what makes us, you know, this is Absolutely. what makes us grown, you know, to deny ourselves those parts of ourselves. Like we would be doing ourselves a disservice. But furthermore, we make ourselves combined. Like we're not in a jail. We're free. We're you know, free. Some, of our, some of our jails are mental, the majority of them, you know, and like I, I, I too think the majority of our jails are definitely mental. I listen real talk like there some of the so many things that you said kind of triggered me this morning. That I want, we're gonna have to do another offline conversation. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk again. But before I let you go this morning, because I do have one other segment that we want to bring on before we wrap this morning. I told y'all we was gonna go over because we play too much and we I knew we were gonna get caught up. But one thing I want to make sure I highlight, because I gotta ask you this last question, because I'm asking everybody, this is the conclusion of women's history month. So I'm gonna ask you that. But I want to make sure that I tell everybody, like, friend. Tony, where have you not been featured? You've been featured in Essence. You've been featured in BuzzFeed, Two Dope Queens. Like, uh, listen, all, this is all the places. And look, we even got the image up there in the corner. Because you can see the image. Is wait, 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 I need to update my website anyway. And now I'm going to put the image on there. That's the team. Listen, I'll say, Hera, all of these places you've been featured. And so I just, I wanted to pop that up there to just say congratulations to you. And then, you know, we, 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 we hood quietly. Like, we, the fact that you've been verified on Instagram, that's like an accomplishment. <laughs> people were like, people were like, now how did you? How it was because I it was because I did this thing in the New York Times, and my friend was like, I know someone who can make this. <laughs> I know someone on Instagram who can make this happen for us because it was like around Black women voting. You know, the New York Times is a whole different thing, so they were like, right, hey, we get you get you verified and da da da. And I was like, I'm ratchet. Like y'all should. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> but the New York Times was not on that list, but you've also been featured in the It's because I haven't now. updated my site, girl. I'm terrible. All right, we're going okay. to get you some help this week. But look, this is my last question that I want to ask you. And I, I, I kind of have a preconceived notion of what you're going to say, but I want you to answer it anyway. So the whole movement, the hashtag, everything, um, Black Girl Magic, what is your take on it? Is it lit? Is it mm, like how do you feel about it? I've been getting mixed reviews on it, but I want to know like what do you feel mm -hmm. about the movement Black Girl Magic? Here's the thing, like I like the magic part more than the black girl part, right? Mm -hmm. And and I, you know, this is an interesting question and one that I always that I always want people to ask me and they like kind of steer away from it. But here's what I'll say. You know, you've got carefree black girl. Um, we have a thousand, like we can go on Instagram and you'll see a thousand like well-read black girl. And that's no shade to those professional black girls, no shade to those spaces because a lot of them are ran by women that I admire and really love and love their platform and participate mm -hmm. and hop on their Zooms. And, you know, like they ask me to speak and I love it, you know, but I do think it's interesting, you know, and there's an interesting history behind the word girl when it comes to black women. And so a part of this that I do love is that, you know, we call each other girl. So mm -hmm. we'll be like, not girl, da 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 you know? But I think that there's something that we have to interrogate and think about if all of our movements that have to do with Black women actually say Black girl, you know? Um, and part of starting Black women are for grownups was really important to me 
because womanhood is not the same thing as girlhood. It's not. We have different responsibilities. We and we've earned that to grow into ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, like we've earned that to be women. And so I appreciate things that will name us who we are, will name us women. You know, I think girlhood makes white people, quite frankly, feel comfortable. You know, mm-hmm. like it makes them feel like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever been called a girl by an old racist, <laughs> racist white person. And sometimes that you know, you can just feel it. You know, like, oh, girl, it, you know, I don't like all that. Call me yeah. a woman. Right. You know? And when we look at like the things that exist for white women, it very rarely has girl in it ever. You know, mm. Lululemon want to show off their stuff. And, you know, like it's like, oh, yeah, these are types for women, you know, and it's like, why well, I always got to be girls. We got to talk about that. But I do understand that amongst us, girl is like our thing. Like right. I think girls can mean different stuff like girl. Right. You know, right. Like, girl. I mean, like, I know. <laughs> right, right, right. I wasn't expecting that, <laughs> you know. And it's like, oh, girl, I'm stressed out. <laughs> like, our girl, our girl. Well, that I understood every last one of those girls based on your girl tone. Stuff, right. You know, and then the word magical for me, you know, there's a part of like, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a little lavender wig made right now. <laughs> You're going to be like, what does that have to do? Go ahead. I know. I'm, make it make sense. Oh, it I okay. gave it to my student and was like, go and make that lavender. I'm trying to wear that around Good Friday, Easter. Okay. <laughs> Make that lavender for me. <laughs> you know, like, and so I say that because I think we have to like introduce magical things in our lives, whether it's just like the nail color we love, the eyeshadow we love, the beautiful balloons behind you, you know, like the the magic we feel when we like feel super cute and we like, yeah, I did that. You know, we hit a selfie, like all of those things. There's this um, there's literally this quote that I love, and it's from a book called Women Who Run with the Wolves. And in the book, she says, take a lover and a friend. It's like, and a friend or friends who look at you as like a growing living entity that you are made of things that are fine, moist, and magical, but you are also human, right? And those things like matter, you know, like we, we do so much, you know, black women in a way, the way that we move through the world, you know, only God has walked on water, right? But we close. <laughs> We're close in the things that we may happen, you know? So, you know, I do think we need to be heralded as magic, but I never want people to hear magic and not think that we're also not human, you know? And I think that matters a lot. Like, it matters that people understand that we are also human beings. Absolutely. You know, like, and... Yeah. We're not just like these magical people that can take all this weight and do all this stuff and like right. kind of like magically make it happen. It's like, no, I need rest. I need vulnerability. Correct. I need honesty. You know, with this, we're not playing hocus pocus. No, we're not. <laughs> we do a lot we're of not, work. We're not no one and no, you know, no, we do a lot of hard work. work. And it's not a twirl of the wand, you know, and we should Absolutely. be respected and honored for that, you know. So, you know. That's how I feel about it. But I, you know, listen, I understand the black girl magic movement. Yeah. At, you know, at what it is. And sometimes we just be looking good. You see, you ever seen a black woman in yellow? That's crazy. You know, like, you know, <laughs> you're talking about something that's magical. You're like, wow. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I had my little yellow on yesterday. I thought I was popping. But no, you you are always popping. Whatever you put on, homie. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you're one of those people Girl, that do it for me. I, was, I just had to grab, you know, my house is still in boxes because I didn't move. Right. So it just everything is everywhere. So I was like, what do I have that's like clean ish that I can like? I was like, okay. I was like, is this giving too much? It's a little, it's a little see through. <laughs> I, <laughs> listen, I didn't, expect, I didn't expect anything less. That's the reason I had my shoulder out. I was like, yeah, I'm going to definitely give Stevana some shoulder action today. I'm going to give the period. people shoulder action, period. And I, I love absolutely it. 100% enjoy our conversation today because I knew we were going to have a good time. I knew we were going to cut out. I'm floored. I am thankful that you took some time out of your super busy schedule to like come chop it up with us. And we got to do this again soon. I don't know. Whenever I, whenever COVID decides they want to go, go. Like, I'm going to come to NOLA. We're going to have a good time. We're going to, I'm not going to tell them what we're going to do, but we're going to have a good time when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I got more, I got more space in the crib. I got yeah. space. So it's time. 
Yes, but if y'all want to link up with Stevana, make sure y'all do. You can go to her website at stevana.com. Uh, what are you releasing the Black Women Are For Grown Ups tease again? I know you only do it once a year, honey. She be yeah. <laughs> the next time that we'll probably do it. Honestly, it's probably around Juneteenth. Okay, and so around what's that? June nineteenth. Yeah, you know, around that time we try to do Juneteenth, and if not Juneteenth, honestly, this summer. But I won't let you know. We won't. We won't have you know a hot summer without. Without the boss, but we can't yeah, do it. Gotta have a hot summer without what was good. I need a crop. You know, I need a crop in my life. Look, so y'all stay trying to get a crop. I just saying people <laughs> cut their crop. I go online, people be tagging me. I be like, sis, not a crop you made. Okay, listen, they've been trying to get people <laughs> crop image shirts forever. I was like, no, nah, like, I can't, I can't, I can't play with <laughs> But no, make sure y'all hit her up. You can get the chat book as well on stevana.com. You can follow her on IG and Facebook. Homie, I love you. I appreciate I you. you. And I Thank was you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. the image on getting this going. I'll tell you that enough. Like, I'm glad that you have this, that you have a platform for us to be able to talk about the things that matter to us the most. Yes. And to be able to share your brilliant personality with the world, it matters. We love you so much. We're so proud of you. As a I family. love you too. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. All right, boo. All right, bye. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. I told y'all I play too much, especially when it comes to Stevon Eden Rogers, y'all. But anyway, we're going to keep the show rolling because I know we're almost out of time. But I know Katrina is about to bust our head with a really quick word. So we got what's the word coming up with Katrina Brown. Hey, Katrina, you in the mix with us this morning. Damn. Oh, I felt her when she was talking about that girl situation. Baby, y'all. I absolutely love that perspective. I've never heard it quite like that. But that right, that part, I loved it. But anyway, I see you in your whole Delta regalia this morning, and you ready. You got your brim. I'm not going to play with you. You do your thing. That's that. So here we are. So anyway, yesterday I talked about um, Rachel, and today I am talking about Leah, the sister, right? So it's in Genesis 29, verses 31 through 30. I'm sorry, 31 through 32. I'm going to read it really quickly. It says, and when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive. But Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, it's because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. And so, you know, I, I doubt Rachel. I dragged Rachel yesterday because she's she's my least favorite person in the Bible. Um, but the other part, hey, Sarah, the other part of this is talking about who Leah was, right? And, you know, when you read the story of Leah, one of the things I've heard preacher, all, preachers always talk about is that the Bible says that she was... Um, she was not beautiful, right? That some people say she was cross-eyed, some people say she was unattractive for whatever reason. Some girl couldn't get married. So Laban tricked Jacob to marry her, first of all. So imagine being put in a situation where you're not the one that's chosen, but your father feels like you will never get married. And so he has to lie to somebody to take you on. So that that's already the situation, right? And then you don't just move on with this man. He decides he's going to work seven more years so he can have your sister because that's what he really wanted. So you got all of that. Plus, I can't imagine what it was like growing up in that time. So you got to think about all the trauma that Leah was facing. And so here's the part, though. The Lord said that he, re the Bible says that the Lord realized that Leah was unloved. And because of this, he allowed her to conceive. And so the part that really always is so heartbreaking for me is that the Lord recognized that she was unloved. And because of that, he, he gave her this gift to be able to bear a child. But instead of acknowledging that God had given her the gift, that God had recognized her misery. She said that. She says, and then she put the focus back on Jacob. For surely my husband will love me now. Um, sis, I know some of us old enough and we already know this, but a baby ain't never kept no man. And I don't care what them old ladies in the church say. Good cooking ain't never kept now either because I know plenty of old women who can cook their butts off. Matter of fact, if you over 50 and can't cook, why are you here? Okay. But they still got out them outside children and second families at the funeral. So I'm just saying, this stuff that they be teaching about, all this cooking and, oh, you're going to have, that ain't never kept no man faithful. So the fact that she literally said, God saw my misery. Surely this will make my husband love me. Surely this will make my husband um, favor me. It leads me to believe that there are a lot of us out there that think that we can fix a spiritual situation, a spiritual problem with secular gifts, right? We think that we can fix something that's dealing in the spirit with something secular, right? We think that, you know, if, if I do this, surely he'll love me. If I do this, surely they'll give me the promotion. When a lot of the issues that we're having as it relates to our self-esteem, our insecurities, um, as it relates to who we are as individuals, are spiritual issues. These are things that we have to deal with on a spiritual level, not in the flesh. And a lot of times when we have spiritual situations, we deal with them in the flesh. And think about this, her first son, Reuben, right? Every son after that, until she had Judah, 
because I want to get to Judah in a second. She always said, she never said, thank you, God. She always said, surely my husband will. Surely he will honor me. Surely he will love me. Surely he will recognize me. And then this is one part that I really want to read in verse 19. So Rachel needs some man grace, right? And so she takes songs from Leah's son. And so she says, well, since you took my son's man grace, I get to sleep with Jacob tonight. And so Jacob comes from work and he about to go lay up with, with Rachel, right? And Leah tells him, this is what she said. This, this, I'd be like, where's your level of shame? Where's your pride? Because if it's one thing Katrina Denise Brown has in this world, baby, what I'm not going to do is beg no man. Okay, let me, let me, I'm digressing now. She says to him, she says, I bought you tonight with my son's mandrake. This is to her husband. She has to beg this man to be intimate with her. Can you imagine being married to somebody who really don't want to be married to you? And you know what's sad, though? A lot of us are in those relationships right now. A lot of us are in, maybe you're not married, but maybe you're married to a job. You ain't supposed to be at. Maybe it's friendships that you're trying to make, hold on to because y'all been friends for all these years and you've been bragging about y'all. But y'all really, this, this ain't really it, right? There's no support. There's no mutual benefit from either one of you guys. Nobody's spiritual. Nobody's encouraging. There's really some real hate going on. Y'all really frenemies, but y'all don't really want to say it. So a lot of us are married to situations. It may not be the form of marriage and husband and wife, but we are married to some situations that maybe we need to be out of. And what we do is instead, we, we realize like we get a promotion. We'll say stuff like, you know, God bless me because he wanted me to shine on my enemies. Is that what you really think that the Lord did that for us? Mm -mm. See, that's what you're doing. You have an Alaris, little spirit in you, right? You're taking the blessings of God and trying to acknowledge them in the flesh. God bless you because he wants you to show your enemies that in spite of their behavior, that he's still more than able. See, you acknowledge the blessing and you, you, you turn this negative. And this is the thing about when the Bible says, don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's what he's talking about, right? When you take what God has blessed you with and acknowledge it in a way that it becomes evil, right? You take the blessings of the Lord and you, you put them in a place where the actual thing becomes, the, the gift becomes the curse, right? The gift becomes the issue. And so I just want to encourage you, search your heart. Maybe if you got a little spirit, it's time to go ahead and do wave that now. We need to be acknowledging what God is doing, what God will do for us. Thank him for it. And stop trying to think that it's associated with the appeasement of man. And I'm not just talking about in the gender. I'm talking about mankind in general. The problem is a lot of us are in people bondage. And as long as we're looking for affirm to be affirmed by people as long as we're for people to co-sign us in every endeavor that we do we're going to always carry this little spirit in us and always feel like we are obligated to make sure that everybody is happy and whole around us except for ourselves so anyway danielle i am done i have enjoyed this this has been an amazing um month and danielle we appreciate everything that you're doing with this ministry so hope you guys were blessed by the word again that was genesis chapter 29 i'm done you better preach, according to Ashley Lindsay, who just came in this morning and said you better preach. Yes, you did. And you did drag. You drug old girl yesterday. But <laughs> I mean, you did it in such a blessed way, Katrina. But thank you so much, Ren, for always giving an amazing word. The series has been amazing. And of course, because of all of your input and your words and the who, not with who, what, when, and where with Maisha and of course, the what's the word with Katrina Brown. So thank you so much for everything that you have done to make this a success. Oh, Lordy, y'all. We have finally come to a close, and I mean, I mean, I'm excited about what has happened in the month of March. I am just super, super like over the moon, over joy, all of the overs and the extras that I can think about, about what we have done here in the month of March. And so I truly believe that we have created a space for like men, women, black girls, black women, all of that to be able to flourish, tell our stories, be honest, be transparent, and all of that, well, we're in, in, and definitely to be free. Y'all know I'm here for, this is one of my absolutely favorite shirts. That is why it's on the banner. It's on all of my postcards because if we are not anything, we have to be free. And that is free to be who God called us to be, free to be ourselves, free to just, it's just a free for me. So anyway, um, I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, the month of March has been amazing. Thank you all for tuning in to the Women's History Month and to all of my guests. Leave that right there because I was trying to pull up every name because every time I go to searching in my mind, I miss somebody. So to every one of my guests, to Rashida Reese, to Jasmine Phillips, to Jamia, to Elder uh, Benita Cheney, to Elder D. Reed, to my cousin Stevonna Elam Rogers, to Brandy Patterson, to Judge Ruby Davis, to Rashida uh, Leroy, 
to Aaliyah Taylor, to uh, Shea Taylor, to uh, Precious in her amazing makeup, to T. Marie King, to Katrina, to Sharifa, to Floricia, to Courtney Howard. God, I hope, oh, to my mommy, to my mommy. And of course, my soror. Like, thank y'all so, so much. Hope, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you all for participating and being a part of the Image Talks Women's History. If I did not, for any reason, include you who are amazing women who are out there doing your things, I want to hear your stories. I am still going to create spaces where you can share your stories. I want to hear from you. So inbox me, tell me, listen, it ain't no shame in you saying, hey, I'm a black woman who rocks and I want to be a part of the next thing. What am I Soros texted me the other day. She was like, hey, I'm going to be ready uh, next March for Women's History Month. I'm going to be ready. I'm getting my business jumped off the ground and I'm going to be ready to be a part of your show. So I want to hear your stories. Like Stavona, my, my cousin who just left us, really, really gave me just some inspiration because you know people will tell you all day long that you're doing good. Good job. Job well done. But to actually hear that this is a space and it's a platform. And, and some of you all have said it. Uh, some of you all have encouraged me throughout this journey. And it has been a journey, y'all. My hair changed a couple of times while we were on the journey. The background changed, my chair changed just a little bit. And so uh I am uh I am floored that that you all uh participated the way that you did, commented the way that you did, loved on me, uh commented, like, share, tag, all of that good stuff. So this is the final show for the Image Talks Women's History, but we are in the process of creating more content, creating more ways that we can honor men and women, creating more spaces for us to be able to dwell and flourish and to be free and to be who God called us to be. Because real talk, I can do all of this platform. We can do a song, the dance, the balloons, the lights. Y'all know my ring light. Y'all, all of this. But if we don't have Christ in our life, if we don't have a savior, if we don't, if we don't accept the Lord as our Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we we a little we're a little off. We're a little off. I, I was reading, I was watching a TikTok a couple of days ago, and it was from a pastor. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be blatant. I'm gonna I'm gonna just say exactly what he said. He said, "Shit gets real," and he said, um, and maybe that's not the quote, but that is the curse word that he used. And then he said. There are 30 million children in America that are starving. And he said, 50% of y'all, all y'all heard me say was the word shit. And it pissed you off, it riled you up, it sent you to no end. But the most important thing that I said was that there are 30 million children that are starving in the country. And he said, if the only thing that you can focus on is the fact that I said a colorful word or a cuss word, then you have a problem. You are the problem and we need to fix it. And so what I am saying to you all is that all of y'all who just heard me say the word shit, if that is what you're focusing on and if that is what's in your heart and if that is what you are purposed and pissed off about, then we have bigger problems. We got to understand that there are people out here in this world that are hurting. There are people that are struggling. There are black women and men who need help. There are social unjust and, and all sorts of things that are happening right before our eyes. The man who killed George Floyd in broad daylight on camera is on trial right now. Why do we even need a trial? We have a black woman that is now the vice president of our entire United States. And we and, and y'all, stuff is happening every day, all day long and twice on Sunday. I'm not Fox 6 like my sister is, but let me tell you, if it's happening, she knows about it. And when it happens, she shares it with me. And I am not oblivious to the fact that we are all suffering in some kind of way. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. We are still equally struggling with stuff personally, things that happen to us as children, and we need to be healed. And whatever space you need to get into to be healed, whatever, whatever you need to do mentally, whether that's therapy, whether that is, is prayer and meditation, whatever you need to do, I am I implore you to go be healed, go and be free and go and seek Jesus. Because without him, we are absolutely nothing. Without him, I am absolutely nothing. This platform would not exist. None of the people that I was able to host will exist. And so that's my spiel on it. That's my take. That's really all I have for the day. I did not plan to come on here and cuss like you know all of that but I just wanted to make a point that we got bigger fish to fry and we got to stop focusing on the small stuff 
We got to stop focusing on that stuff, those things that so easily entangle us and rile us up. We got to stop focusing on those things and focus on what's important. How can I serve God today? How can I serve his people today? How can I help bring somebody out of the pit today? How can I spread the gospel today? How can I encourage somebody? Who can I sow a seed to? Who do I need to buy lunch for today? Who do I need to bless? Like, what are we doing out here in these streets? I ain't just out here trying to look cute. I mean, I like being cute. I love being festive. I love doing all of that kind of stuff. But real talk, it's folks out here hurting. It's folks out here who really need something. And if you have what people need and you out here withholding it all because you just want to be, I, I, you just want to be it and lit, then you selfish and you're greedy. And I may be talking to myself in some form of fashion, but we got to get real and we got to stop playing with what is happening in our world. We are in this world. We are not of it, but we got to open our eyes and realize what is happening. Derek, Decas, Font Leroy, I love you dearly <laughs> and I will talk to you later. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Image Talks Women's History. Continue to share and like and love and follow us on all of our platforms and everything that we have going on at the image. We are releasing the image events very, very soon. We are already working, but we're working on a whole bunch of stuff that we are breaking out very, very soon. Of course, the image speaks is on YouTube. Uh, so go over to the image speaks uh, on YouTube and catch us there. And any uh, guests that you missed, you can find it over on YouTube. We're also on Instagram at Danielle, the image. And if you missed all of that and anything that I said, you can go directly to our website at DanielleBTheImage.com and find all of our merch. I, matter of fact, I'm gonna ask, we're gonna get with Stevana. Let me see if I can put I can put these black women off of grown up shirts down to the to, to my website. But anyway, uh, we'll talk with her. I love you all dearly. Thank you so much, Stevana. I love you to my mama. Thank you for everything. And I, listen, I'm told y'all I'm giving my speech for when I win my first Essence Award or my BET Award or my NAACP, any of them, because I know they're coming. I'm just preparing myself for my speech. Anyway, I digress. I love you guys. And I will see you all sometime next month when we roll out our new stuff. So see you all soon. You all have a blessed and prosperous Wednesday. And don't forget, go down to Publix and get your $5 sushi and make sure it's $5 and not 7 because they make it over. All right. Love y'all. See you soon.